just converted my old touring bike to an e-bike with uh, one of those Bafang uh, e-bike conversion kits. And um, it, it worked out well, but there are some issues uh, that I ran into that I imagine other people are running into that I thought I would uh, talk about. Well, one of the issues that I ran into here was uh, installing the motor onto this. Um, this is an old specialized hard rock mountain bike, 1998. So it's got a 73 millimeter bottom bracket, and that is the with the width of the bracket from side to side, 73 millimeters. And this kit will fit a bottom bracket of 68 to 73 millimeters. But if you've got a 73 millimeter bottom bracket, uh, you need to modify this just a little bit. Uh, what happens is uh, this this bracket here gets uh, held on by this uh, big nut here, and it it is screwed to the motor to hold it in place, top and bottom. But if you're if you've got a 73 millimeter bottom bracket, it makes it just a little too wide, and so the screws or the, the bracket itself is held out away from the edge of the uh, the motor mount here. So there's a, there's a space there. And I filled that space up with this nut. It's just a, a nut that I don't even know the size of it. I just made sure it was just a little bigger than the screw. And I could just slide the screw right through it and bolt this thing down uh, without having it bend this bracket in towards the frame here. So that's one of the modifications you'll do and there's there's a in this kit they gave gave me washers to put in there to fill up that space but I just thought a, a nut one nut was a little cleaner install. So I did that and um, then on the bottom here uh, you can see that there's a I've got the same thing. See I've got the nut on the inside here. But I also needed to add some washers to the outside of the of the bracket uh, between the screw head and the bracket because if you don't do that, and this is the longer screw that comes with the kit in case you have a 73 millimeter bottom bracket, but on the bottom one, uh, if, if you use that screw and you don't have any washers here, it will go in too far and will contact the housing for the motor and it could damage it. So uh, you can, you know, you could either just get a shorter screw here. It has to be long enough to, you know, go through this space where the nut is, but short enough that it doesn't go in so far that it contacts the motor housing in here. But I just put these washers on there, a few of those, and, and that was enough to hold it out away from there. So that's one problem. Uh, pretty simple fix. And uh, another problem I had was mounting this battery. Now it's uh, obviously a down tube battery, but it, it comes with a, um, there's a, there's a slide mount here and the bottom, the battery slides in here and it goes down onto that mount and then slides down to lock itself in. Then you, you, you actually have a key to lock it. But um, that mount, it, it's supposed to screw to your uh, frame with through the the uh, water bottle cage uh, screw holes and the screw holes on this one are way down here so here's the slide mount that the battery goes on to and you can see that this is these slots here are you know made for the screws to go through for the water bottle cage but as you can see those screw holes are way down here. So if I tried to move this down here to mount it on there, there's, I mean, I can't even do it because this, this will hit the C tube and it, it won't allow me to go down that far. So, um, you know, they make these things sort of universally, uh, but you know, because there's so many different sizes and types of bikes that it's really hard, I would imagine for them to have a specific kind for each specific size and type of bike. So 
you, you, you're going to have to make some modifications to this probably to fit your bike. And so that's what I had to do. And if you look in here, underneath this thing, you can see that I added this bar. And um, you can see the bar right up here underneath. And it's just about a half inch wide and it's 10 inches long. And it goes all the way down here. And so it just so happened that this bar had slots in it already, which was kind of convenient. So I was able to just screw the lower part of the bar to the um, water bottle cage screw holes and mount it down there. And then on the upper part of the bar, I screwed or I drilled holes in the bar so to where I could run screws through it from the bottom up in order to mount the, in order to hold the uh, slide bracket in place uh, from further up here. So it worked out really well. Um, it holds it nicely, but one problem is that, as you can see, it's a little bit off the down tube now. It, it, it holds it up away from the down tube a bit, and that allows the battery to kind of wobble from side to side. So, they know that wasn't good. So what I did for that is I got a couple of these uh, L brackets here or you know they're no they're known as uh, corner braces. These are two inch corner braces and I just uh, you know used the screw for the water bottle cage on the C tube to you know screw the ends together here uh, and then um, they each go off in this direction and then I had to widen this just a little bit. I just bent it out a little bit and covered it with electrical tape so it wouldn't scratch the battery. But now the battery slides down right in between here and it and this holds it really nicely uh, in a solid position so it doesn't wobble. And uh, that worked out really well too. So the, la the last thing I had a tr problem with was this uh, gear sensor. Um, these right here, this this is a gear sensor and it has the cable for the rear derailleur going right through the middle of it. And um, it, uh, what it does is it shuts the motor down for just a, just a split second while you're changing gears so that you, know, you have no power when it's going into a new gear and that way it doesn't slam it into gear and wear out your chain and, and cogs faster. But all the videos I've seen to mount this thing uh, had it go through. You, what you do is you cut out a piece of the casing for the for the uh, the shifting cable uh, wide enough to to for this to go in the middle there. So then you have bare wire from one edge to the other going right through the middle of this gear sensor. And um, the problem I had was I had no casing. On the on the chainstay between here and here, and that was really the only practical place for me to mount this thing. So, what I did was I um, mounted one side of it right up against this uh, braze on here that holds uh, the casing from the other side, and then I cut off a piece of casing that I had just laying around, and. Um, ran that up in the, onto the other side and then it's got a little seal that goes on the end of it and and goes into the gear sensor and that seal uh, keeps water out of it and that was that was my main concern if there's no no casing there or or seal then water's going to get in there and probably ruin it so uh, so and then i just held those on with zip ties and uh, it works really well it um, no problem shifting at all. It shuts the motor down real nice. It makes the shifting real smooth and uh, that worked out really nicely. So there really were no other issues uh, installing this thing uh, except for, you know, there was extra cable or wires. You know, they, they come with kind of long wires because, you know, some people have big frames. And uh, so, you know, I just had to kind of wind that around like this one here, this comes up, this is the main wire that comes up and on the end plugs into the, the brake, uh, brake sensors that, you know, cuts the motor off when you're braking. 
and also the display, the wire from the display, and also the uh, throttle throttle wire. They all they all plug into that one, but it's long, so I had it come up here, and then it comes down here, and then it winds around and comes back up again, and uh, then plugs into all these other things, and and you know I mean. It's, is it a super clean install? No, but you know, I mean, you've got all these wires, they got to go somewhere, right? And, and I don't care. It's, you know, I've, I've got them all held down by zip ties, so nothing's loose. And um, the bike is dark and the, the wires are black, so you don't really notice it that much. And it's just absolutely fine with me. So, but uh, so far, I'm really liking this thing. I'm getting a top speed of uh, about 30 miles an hour. This is a 44 tooth chain ring and my cassette is uh, the, low, the highest gear is 11 11 tooth so 44 and 11 and then 26 inch tires and you know I'm just pedaling like hell <laughs> to get to uh, 30 miles an hour um, you know no effort involved really but uh, it's just a high cadence and you know I probably only do that if I'm trying to outrun a dog or something but um, it's nice to know that it can go that fast and uh, if I do need it but uh, other than that you know I've, I've got a kind of a steep driveway about a quarter mile long and I've, I rode it up that and geez it just in you know the gear you can change the power level from one to nine and I only had it on number two and geez it just sailed right up that hill no problem at all so I'm really liking this setup, and um, what I'm planning on doing is this was my touring bike, you know, before I went to the uh, the lightweight carbon road bike for touring. But I'd still like to do some tours on this, you know, when I want to carry more gear, you know, four panniers and a dry bag and have all the conveniences with me, and this, this is going to make that easier to do uh, when I want to do that. And... Um, well, all I have to figure out now is what kind of range I can get out of it. I've got a 20 amp hour battery, but um, we'll figure that out and uh, go from there. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helped anybody who's uh, running into these issues. See you next time.